A gospel reading from the 24th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A reading from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Naples, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Syatrea and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. If you are interested in doing that uh, labyrinth experience, you can sign up online or talk to the church office this week. Uh, We didn't get that information right in the video, but we'd love for you to join us. Well, grace and peace to you, dear siblings in Christ. I'd like to begin today's message with a pop quiz of first century Mediterranean geography. So ushers, um, please come forward and distribute the quiz sheets. If anyone needs a pencil, just raise your hand. We'll make sure that you get one. Everybody's good? Okay. You guys did great. Didn't they do great? Those are, they really, they really nailed it. Okay. We're, we're kind of going to do a pop quiz, but there's going to be no grades. There will be no tests. But the reality is that in this scripture, there is a lot of attention given to place and direction and where they were going. It's kind of this geographic puzzle of what's going on here and why it matters. Especially if, like me, you're not super familiar with the region Borders and names have changed multiple times in 2,000 years, and even pronouncing the places is tricky. Believe me, I would not have passed this pop quiz. Let's just go over it. So last week in the, in the, in the Acts that we read, we were with Paul and Barnabas in Jerusalem for the council. Look at here. I'm, gonna, I'm going old school right here. Can you guys see that? You can't. Oh, shoot. It's not a big enough pointer because there's so many places on the map. All right. Uh, You can move forward if you really want to see. Otherwise, just imagine, imagine the travels that we're going to do. So between Jerusalem and where we are today in Troas, right there, a lot has happened. And we're going to just cover it quickly. So the missionaries traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch to deliver the church council minutes. Everyone there received those minutes in form of a letter, and they celebrated. After that, Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement, and they decided to separate ways. So Barnabas took someone named Mark with him to Cyprus to deliver the good news, and Paul chose Silas to travel with him. They went through Syria and Cilicia. Hold on. Then Derby and Lystra, through the region of Phrygia, which is, I promise it's on here somewhere. Lost Phrygia, it exists somewhere. Um, through the region of Phrygia, oh, here it is right here, and Galatia, okay? 
Then they couldn't go south here because in Acts, it tells us they've been prevented by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, the Mediterranean region, not the continent. Okay, so Asia is right here. It's just a region of the Mediterranean. So because they couldn't go this way, they went towards Mysia, hoping to cross into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus will not allow that to happen. I'm not exactly sure what this means, as the author doesn't elaborate on what this roadblock is or what the roadblock was forbidding them to go to Asia. But whether it was a vision or an intuition or things not coming together, the road was closed, so to speak. So instead of going into Bithynia, they went to Troas here on the coast. And while they were at Troas is where our story picks up today. While they're there, Paul has a dream of a Macedonian man asking them to help. Macedonia is across the water here in this area. The Macedonian man wants them to come and help. So they leave Troas, they head to Macedonia by way of Samothrace, through Neapolis to the city of Philippi, which was basically the capital of Macedonia and a Roman colony. You guys got that? Okay, good. Now, let's just take a deep breath, okay? They have arrived. The place they are convinced God has called them to bring the good news. As the Lord opened the way there, seemingly directing them while closing other routes. And so they stayed there for some days. When the Sabbath came in the city of Philippi, they did, they did something quite interesting. They went outside the gate of the city by the river, where according to custom, there was a place of prayer. Now, this might seem normal. This is very peculiar. Up until this point in the book of Acts and in subsequent stops on the journey, the typical place that Paul goes is the synagogue. He sought the synagogue first. But he and Philippi do not go to the synagogue in Philippi. Instead, they find this group of women gathering and prayer, worshiping by the river outside the city on the Sabbath day. So Paul and Silas join these women and speak to them. Doesn't tell us, but I'm guessing preaching and teaching as they are known to do. And among those we encounter, we learn especially about the woman Lydia. She's described as a God worshiper. Lydia listened eagerly to what Paul and Silas were saying, and she and her whole household were baptized. Now, I'm sorry, you probably thought we were done with geography. We're not. Part two of our geography lesson today. Lydia is actually the name of a region across the sea, um, either a, a Roman province or a kingdom of its own. Oops, depending on the... Oh, man. Okay. Depending on what year it was, it's kind of this area is called Lydia. And where she's from in Lydia is Thyatira, which is this purple dot right here. Now, saying that you met a woman named Lydia from Thyatira is like saying you just met a woman named Minnesota from Forest Lake. Right? We miss that because we're so far removed. But the hearers of this would have made a connection to the place, Lydia. So, the Holy Spirit led Paul and Silas from Troas to Macedonia through a vision of a Macedonian man asking them for help. And here, they arrive and they have a powerful encounter, not with a man, but with a woman. And not with a Macedonian, but with a Lydian from Asia, where they previously had been forbidden to speak the word of God. Hmm. So in Philippi, this Lydian, this foreigner, was an outsider. 
She was an outsider in the region of Macedonia. And she is the person on whom the story focuses. Lydia heard the good news of Jesus from Paul and Silas. She became a leader in the Christian church in Philippi. She is known today as Saint Lydia of Thyatira, icon pictured here. She's often credited as the first Christian convert documented in Europe. Now, maybe for you, the unpronounceable names and the maps are just confusing or they're a distraction to the story. But I wonder why give them so much attention? I believe those details are included for a reason. Why would Paul and Silas go through so much travel, be stopped and blocked by God's Spirit in such unusual ways to find this woman, a foreigner in the land of Macedonia, as they seek to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to this place. How odd and grace-filled that this woman from Thyatira in Asia, where the Spirit had forbidden them to go, is now met in Philippi and hears and receives the gospel. The scripture today tells us God opened Lydia's heart to receive the good news. And in turn, Lydia opened her home, and she welcomed Paul and Silas with generous hospitality. God blocks roads and gives a vision of the way forward. God opens hearts to hear and to receive. God's direction and path for us is not always something we can anticipate or schedule into our lives or even prepare for. Over and over and over again in the story, we are reminded that it's God who's in charge of the mission. It's God who sets the direction and God who determines the results. Earlier this summer, I had one of these situations. God's spirit was up to something unexpected. Our synod's bishop, uh, Patricia Lull, had invited me to lunch, and we met on a patio on a busy Hennepin Avenue this summer. There was really no agenda for this meeting, just one-on-one time to connect. Bishop Lull asked me questions about where I grew up and how I came to be called into ministry, my experiences with some of my previous congregations. She shared stories of her early time in ministry and wise mentors who advised her. She asked me about what we're doing here in Forest Lake at Faith, and we chatted for quite a while about Prayer Lab and how how much I love exploring prayer with people and interviewing people about their prayer practices. As we were visiting this, I could sense this woman kind of pacing behind me on the patio, and then Quite nervously, she she approached us. She had overheard us talking about prayer, and she wanted to ask us to pray for her. She had actually said, this is crazy, and had tried to walk away. But God's Spirit would not allow her to do that, and had pushed her back to us. It took a bit of convincing But we managed to get her to sit down in an empty chair at our table. And the bishop boldly said, this is Nina, and she really loves to pray. So I asked for this woman's name and what was going on in her life. Maggie shared about her struggles with a chronic health issue and being a mom to a young child while dealing with everything. So I prayed for this courageous person who was enduring so much and really struggling in the midst of incredibly difficult circumstances. It was powerful. It was unplanned and unexpected. Tears were shed. After I finished praying, we visited a bit more, and Maggie told us about her faith background, and that 
As a young girl, she always wanted to be a Catholic priest, which I found delightful. And then Maggie said she wanted to pray for us. So she turned to the bishop and asked if she could pray for her. And the bishop told her what it was like to do the job of a bishop. And Maggie prayed aloud right then and there. And then she turned to me and asked how she could pray for me. So Maggie prayed for what I was carrying in that moment on that restaurant patio on Hennepin Avenue. Sometimes we're the ones receiving the good news when we least expect it. Or in the most unlikely of places, when we're just trying to mind our own business. Other times, we are the ones God's Spirit is using to bring peace or transformation or the power of grace to another. On occasion, it might be both of these things happening at the exact same time. We cannot begin to predict how God will speak to us or how God will work through us out in the world. How odd and grace-filled that this woman approached two clergy on a restaurant patio for a time of sacred prayer and connection. Like dear Lydia and Maggie, how might God be opening your heart? Who might God be sending along your path to bring good news or to receive grace? To what odd and grace-filled moments is God navigating you? May you, dear friends, have Lydia's open heart, Paul's willingness to follow, and the leading of God's Spirit as your divine GPS. Amen.